We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's amazing episode, I have the phenomenal BJ Johnson, Brian Johnson. Okay, I call him BJ, but BJ is a thought leader and talent producer in Hollywood and Amazon number one best selling author, host, and inspirational speaker. So welcome, BJ, to the show. The crowd goes wild. Thank you so much for having me. Listen, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you to you for creating this platform. I study, I watch, I see what you're doing. I'm always cheering you on from afar. But you created this platform. I know where you started at. And it's just great that you bring me on. I'm honored. So thank you for having me. Oh, flattery and affirmations will get you everywhere with me. (laughs) Thank you, BJ. It is an honor to have you on, Mr. Number One Bestselling Author. Uh, I need you to start off in this hot spot, right? In this G spot. That's the guest spotlight. Okay. Um, with (laughs) With you letting everybody know when you first fell in love with yourself. Yeah. Oh, uh, at 30, I fell in love with myself at 30 when I went to therapy oh, because wow. I, I didn't understand. Like I had been disliking myself, mad at my father for shit that he did. You know, I just, it wasn't until I was 30 until I went to therapy. You know, I was tired of using that as an excuse. Um, all of that baggage was showing up in my personal relationships, mm. my professional relationships. And I really wasn't truly loving myself because of the way that I was treating other people, specifically women. Mm. Um, and the way that I was treating myself and not really taking my dreams into consideration and so that I could soar. So it wasn't until I was 30, honestly, until I went to therapy to really under, understand and get rid of the trauma, you know, that was really buried deep within. So yeah. it was 30. Oh my gosh. I love that you did that and you speak to that. Um, there's many men who could benefit from getting therapy and like finding out what's the source of their inability to love themselves and to love women. Um, unfortunately we're such huge lovers. So sometimes we suffer, you know, the back end of not having that like growth and wanting someone who may not be there yet. So I'm going to do a little bit diving into like the relationship aspect with you in a second, but today's topic is about our relationship with our dreams, right? Um, whether they're relevant to us right now, whether we had a dream and we let it go, whether it's something that we're pursuing, you're going to hear a little noise in the background. Um, sorry, you guys, my house is under construction. What else is there to do during COVID? Um, (laughs) we're getting the fireplace done. So if you hear hear any drilling, um, that's just the hand of God, um, (laughs) drilling in this message, but BJ, you're going to explain a little bit right now about how we do live our dreams, right? We have this dream. um, I have multiple dreams. I'll use me as a guinea pig. And I mentioned to you and was vulnerable that like, sometimes we get in this um, freeze fight or flight mode when it comes to our dreams. Sometimes they get lost and forgotten. What do we do when we have this dream, but we're afraid to even start? Let's truly just, let's start with defining what a dream is because a dream is really essentially a goal, right? And depending on what your dream is, Some people see a dream as this thing lofty that's not obtainable. But I think the great thing about our society and where we are right now, with the birth of the internet, with information, we are being more exposed to things that we didn't even know was possible. Yeah. So so the things are starting to open up inside of us. And we're we're saying like, man, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. But we lack the structure, right? Which is why I wrote the book. Because when I was getting started with my dreams, I was like, where do I start? Where do I start? Mm. I want to I wanna go out here and I want to do this TV show. I want to write this book. I want to speak, but I don't know where to start. So the reason why I wrote this book and I brought it here for you is Live Your Dreams Out. Ooh, the perfect. That's the book. <laughs> um, and for anybody, you know, um, maybe I can give a, a few free copies to anybody that, that, that wants to get the book, whatever. We'll talk about that later. But Ooh, people, I love that. Let's raffle it off on when I post this episode. Like, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, we'll do it. Third person uh, to follow BJ and hit a like. <laughs> people like, like we lack the framework and we lack the foundation. And, and for me, the, the number one thing is we lack clarity. Mm. We're not clear. So when we, we live in fear because we don't have structure, we're not clear about how to go about doing it. And so that's the number one thing that I've found that most people, they, they're fearful because they don't necessarily know where to start and what it looks like. For me specifically, when I was pursuing my dreams, I reached out to Tavis Smiley and found somebody that was already successful at what it was that I was looking to do. Mm -hmm. So then it would cut those mistakes down. Not to say this person's perfect because we know perfection doesn't exist, but he's already the person that has done 
the work. So let me learn from him. So yeah. anybody that's out here looking to get started with your dreams, first get clear by finding somebody or something that's already been done that's very similar. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing, but find somebody so that you can eliminate and prevent those mistakes on the front end. What about the voice that tells people, because this is real, who, the person who's already doing it or who has made it isn't going to be interested in me. The person who, you know, is successful isn't going to talk to little old me. What about that when that voice kicks in? I think the biggest thing is always finding ways to add value because a lot of people reach out and they're just like, how can you help me? How can you help me? But they haven't added any value anywhere. And so for me, it's about finding ways creatively to add value to people first. And I think that gets rid of that voice and that that will give you the more confidence that you need to push forward, you know, towards your dreams once you figure out ways. Because listen, we all got gifts, but I think mm -hmm. when you learn, like when you do the world a disservice, if you don't give those gifts away. Yep. Right. So for me, it's about when I reached out to Tavis, I wanted to add value to him, but I knew the gifts and the talents that I had would help him in his business. And just by sheer reciprocity, like just reciprocal, like he had to in turn help me back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that calmed the voice and all the fear-based things that was, you know, um, internal with me. So it sounds like a lot of it is pumping ourselves up and having a conversation with ourselves from a self-esteem standpoint, from a confidence standpoint, in actually believing that we are capable. The, Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to believe that we're capable in order to have a behavior that serves us. Absolutely. It first starts with, it starts within. And I, I believe more and more as I get older, it's really about having some sort of anchor you know, some sort of spiritual anchor, um, but some sort of anchor that allows you to stay disciplined, right? Because we wake up and I, we leave our life to randomness, right? We leave our life in randomness and we don't necessarily have a plan that we're constantly working on and executing. Mm -hmm. And what I find is if you don't have constant inspiration and motivation in your life, that's where the anxiety creeps in. That's where like all of these things, everything about the world creeps in is because you're so attached to the world and you don't have a plan and you're just out here living your life. And you're not really structured and disciplined. And that truly matters, right? To, to, to answer all of those negative voices and stuff that's coming your way. Like life, being in this space to vibrate in a higher energy, you and I were just talking about you yep. and your girls and the, and the work that you all do. Like I see it like being in that camaraderie and that energy and the way that you all are just vibing together and holding each other accountable. That's important. And I also think finding those accountability partners to help you along the way, because life can be difficult and things happen every single day. You know? I always say that a mastermind group is extremely beneficial. People who are in their same journey, on the same path, some may even be further along than you and yeah. can show you the way or give you different ideas, help you grow, make your business plan. But when it comes to really, if you're trying to build an empire, you need to have people who also believe in your empire. <laughs> so Absolutely. we oftentimes we get associated or we have friends or loved ones who don't necessarily believe in what we're trying to do. When I first started the spicy life and I was like, I want a relationship coaching and matchmaking business. And I want a TV show and I want a radio show. And I want to like, everybody's like, yeah, I don't know. If, society really needs that what happens dating apps blow up <laughs> yep, yep. relationships become like one of the number one trending shows on television like all these things start to happen and the self-help books become popular and what it took though was me believing in myself and like not operating from a place of just because others say I can't that doesn't make it the truth like sometimes Ooh. we really have to go within and say like I believe me even when y'all don't believe me I love that. I call that trusting your internal GPS. Like you got to trust that and allow that thing to navigate you in life, understanding that there are going to be times where the route is going to change, right? As you're on your way to your destination, because you're on your way to building that empire. And it's not meant for everybody to get in that car as you're on your yeah. way to, to your destination. It's just not meant for everybody, but you got to trust it. And that's what you're doing. Like I see it, like you, you definitely do it. But when you trust yourself too, that part of intimacy, right? Because everything is relationship based. I always circle it back to relationship. When you have trust for yourself, other people trust someone who trusts themselves. When you Absolutely. don't trust yourself, we can't get behind or believe in someone who doesn't believe in themselves. It makes it even harder to trust someone who, who lacks self-trust. So Absolutely. a part of getting people behind you or getting them to buy in is that self-trust. Right. Talk to me a little bit about when you were fearful and what you did to conquer that fear. Um, going back to what I said initially, like when I was fearful in terms of wanting to pursue these dreams, mm -hmm. 
I just didn't have the structure. I didn't know what that looked like, right? So it was really about getting out of my comfort zone to find somebody who had already done it. Like that makes the most sense to me, right? Um, and times right now, for me, it's about also constantly having some sort of practice, some sort of discipline that's holding me accountable. Every single day when I wake up, I already know what I am going to do for the day. Yeah. This is my intentionality, but I set my intention the night before. Mm. I plan the night before so that I can win the next day so that I'm just not waking up to randomness. Because when I do, that's when the fear seeps in, right? Because I'm not sure about what direction to go and I'm just kind of like out here. But if I have that discipline, right? And going back to what you're saying about trust, people trust people. I believe the work that like you and I are doing yeah. is so spiritual, right? It because is. It, it, so many people are trusting and believing in us to help guide them. Mm-hmm. So you got to have those disciplines and you got to you got to be able to, you know, have some sort of regimen on a constant basis that, so that you can vibrate higher because you're responsible for other people, right? And so that's just that's fundamentally what I believe. So routine, there's something beneficial from like the routine or daily habits. And I like your, I'm going to call it a spicy tip of setting your intent the night before, because right. then it does make you not wake up to even the, hmm, what do I feel like my intention should be today? If you set it the night before, that does give you something to look forward to the next day, or you are holding yourself to a certain standard or a certain expectation. And so it takes a little bit, even the pressure off of that morning, you waking up rush to do whatever you got to go do. Now you already know what your intention is and what to accomplish for the day. Absolutely. I call it winning that morning, you know, when you win that morning the night before. And if you think about it, we've gotten so used to waking up and then going straight to our phone yeah. and taking part in the world and everybody else. And we haven't done anything with ourselves. So it's about you spending some time with yourself, whether you're reading, whether you're meditating, whether you're stretching, whether you're exercising, spend some time with yourself first before you go and interact to the world in the shade room and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> like yo, yo spend some time with yourself put that phone down don't even touch your phone what did your morning look like before you got on with me what did you do to set your intention for today like what was your intention for today and what did you do this morning before me i woke up i prayed i meditated i got out of bed i drank eight glasses of, uh eight ounces of uh water mm-hmm. i stretched and i went to the park and uh and worked out i came back i read a chapter or something that i'm working on right now took a shower and then just started my day. That's pretty much all of that started. before <laughs> before this podcast. I love that. Look, <laughs> number one best selling author. This is how you do it. He yeah. really had like all of this time for like self to to invest in yourself just to make sure that you're good to go so that your cup is full so that you can pour into others. Absolutely. I love that. We need to be doing more of that. Uh, mm-hmm. Part of what happens though, BJ, when it comes to and I and I love this structure piece because I'm a huge advocate right because the things that you're saying is what I believe in for with my clients like we think that like just like our dreams we think love is this thing that just falls on our lap that like if it's meant to be it'll just be and that we don't have to do any work or any action-oriented behaviors to manifest it and that's actually very untrue (laughs) what you're speaking to even when it comes to our dreams is that we have to show up and be present and do the work for ourselves. And then be able to actually have a routine and schedule that holds us accountable. Absolutely. That's what I tell my clients to do for dating all of the time, relationships and dating. But what relationship do you have to have with yourself when it comes to your dreams? Because there's some of us who have 20 dreams. How do we know which dream to tackle and what's going to lead us to our ultimate goal? Or how do we know what's realistic? Some of us are like, 45, 50, still trying to be a rapper. What for those unrealistic dreams? And I, sorry, if that's your dream, um, someone who's listening, but like for people like that, I mean, that would, I would have a voice in my head. That's like, I can't be a professional singer at 50. I don't have a voice. What yeah. would you say when we have too many dreams and they're unrealistic? Well, the truth is your reality is what you make it right. I firmly do believe in that. I think that a lot of us have a lot of things we're passionate about right? That fall up under the dream umbrella. Some of us have like what we call our calling, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Which feels like more spiritually aligned, something that we should be doing all the time. So I think it's really about deciphering between calling, passion, purpose, Mm -hmm. and those are all different modalities. When it comes to purpose for me, the overarching umbrella is how do you maximize your time while you're here, right? We're passionate about a lot of things. Yeah. Purpose is deeply rooted into how do you maximize your time? 
So for those individuals that have this shiny object syndrome, you want to do this, you want to do this. Cool. If you're passionate about those things, I'm going to encourage you to keep doing those things yeah. because that may lead you to the one thing that you may be more, that may preempt you to, to focus more on that. So I'm going to say, keep being passionate, allow those things to, to keep igniting something because there's something about our passions and I, I don't think that we give them enough attention, mm, right? Agreed. I, don't, I don't think we give them enough attention. For me, I'm passionate about business. I'm passionate about entrepreneurship, speaking, like helping people. Like I'm passionate about a lot of things, but I know what the true alignment is in terms of the one thing that I'm supposed to be doing. And that is me using my gifts and my talents to inspire yes. people. Like that is what God has called me to do, right? I love that you bring up passion because, um, and the three things that you said were passion, purpose, calling. Yeah. Passion is huge. And this is something that I teach in my practice. Passion is huge because when you don't have any, you don't have reasons outside of work, work, work to be excited about life. Right. Passions make you a more interesting person. Right. What do people want to date? Interesting people. Right. And so when you actually have passions, it creates like three elements, self-growth for yourself because you learn more about yourself through your passions. Two, growth through made involvement. A partner comes along or someone comes along who wants to date you and they look at your passions and what you're doing, the things that make you happy or excite you. And right. now you have something to teach them. Mm -hmm. They also get to see you growing outside of them and having these extracurricular activities and things that excite you, that ignite you. And they're not fully responsible for bringing all the passion into your life. Mm -hmm. So you get to teach them and you also get growth. And then the third element that passion have for a person is arousal. When someone sees you in your passion, exciting yourself, it excites them. And now your sex is better because they're more aroused by how happy you are as a person, how you're fulfilling yourself. It makes you actually more sexual, more desirable. <laughs> <Talk that's laughs> your person has, yes, your person has so much passion and they want, and they can pour passion into you as well, but you're not fully responsible for it when your person comes along and they're the only ones who has passions and you don't. That, that person becomes your world. And a lot of couple, couples lose relationship because they don't have passions. They're not acting on them or they had them and the person comes along and they're like, got them. I don't need to have any passions anymore because you're my passion now. Mm, no. So I love that you're saying this passion because it works with career as well. It works with our dreams as well. Passions are an intricate part of our romantic life and our professional life. Let me just say this from a producer standpoint and your friend standpoint, I'm over here like, Number one, that's bars. Number two, that's bars. <laughs> <laughs> number two, that's a framework to a book. And number three, whenever you get done with this episode, you need to take that part, edit it out, and just drop it on the world because you just gave a lot of a lot of game. Like I appreciate the way that you said it was beautiful. So yeah, I this is this is a part of my a part of my curriculum. So I don't know if you know me, Jake, because I post it all the time. And um, my listeners probably have like heard me say it over and over, but I'm going to say it again. Spicy stands for more than just like this hot girl out here giving relationship advice. It actually stands for self-awareness, for passion. That's what the P is for. The I is for intimacy. The C is communication. And the Y is learning to say yes. Yes to your dreams. Yes to your lover. Yes to the art of negotiation. Yes to your beliefs. So S-P-I-C-Y, when you said passion, I was like, that's the P in passion. Yes. Yep. Like, and a lot of us lose that. We lose ourselves when our dreams don't come to fruition. Mm. Some of us just tap out. We just give up. It's the, hard, man. It life, is. Is, it, life can be hard. Life can be really difficult, but it's really about changing your mindset too as well and your environment. Like so many factors go into that. And I think because the overwhelming view that we have of people doing this and doing that and people not being happy with themselves because they're so tuned into the world and not tuned into themselves. Mm -hmm. For example, when this pandemic came about, I knew I needed to go in. I knew I needed mm -hmm. to do more work. I knew I needed to raise up and elevate myself because there were going to be people, my clients, depending on me, my yeah. family, people yeah. that I support, like they were going to depend on me. So I had to go inward and, and push the world out. There's so many distractions out here in this world that is completely ridiculous. And it, we just don't understand how much when we feed into society, how much that, how much anxiety that causes, us. how much depression that causes, like it really affects us on a, on a huge scale. Give us some forewarnings for those of us, maybe we don't know that we're distracted and we're wrapped up in things that aren't beneficial for us. What are some of these distractions that you think are holding us back from living our dreams out loud? Our phone, social media, <laughs> you know, that, those are the top two things, technology. You know, we're not, we're not connecting with nature enough. We're not traveling enough. We're not seeing enough. 
I believe when you travel, it truly does ignite. And of course, right now we can't, but just it's, it's really little things. It's taking a different route home. Mm-hmm. don't take the same route like really get out of your comfort zone and start to see something different mm-hmm. right because when you do that really ignites the creativity that's already in, inside you yeah but it already it, it ignites like the inspirational uh what i call chamber that's already inside you see something different there are little things but this phone technology and these apps man yeah okay situation I'm a huge, and see, I'm a huge advocate of like, because you guys listen to me all the time talking about online dating and I'm a huge advocate of it. I believe in it. Um, and social networking too. It's beneficial. You can find love um, sliding through someone's DM. However, what BJ is speaking to is factual database that the quality of your life goes down and the quality of your relationship goes down the more attached to your cell phone you are. Yeah. Studies show that one of the partners is going to suffer when you are attached to your phone and you have lost out, like you disconnected from being mindful and in that moment with your partner, you wind up getting locked in into your phone or into your friend circles. I mean, I mean, I had a great time last night. Um, we, we had like a little um, friends giving and literally at one point, all of us were on our phones. In that we were, we had to stop and say, ladies, let's put our phones down because we're not being present in the moment. We're going to start recording this six course dinner that my girlfriend who's a chef created, and we're not going to actually like connect with one another. So instead we busted out some mindfulness cards and we started giving our affirmations and what that affirmation means to us. But we had to be mindful about that. I can't even imagine if we didn't point out the fact that our cell phone was the distraction because most of us don't even realize we're just in it all day long mm-hmm. there's a lot. sometimes cell phones social networking there's a lot of studies right now in terms of uh, new therapy that's going to have to come about for us to disconnect right so we're because we're so in the matrix of technology and our phone there's therapy that's already happening right now to to really unlock people that are so glued to their phone think about that okay Isn't there that has to so, be therapy thing? done for it yeah there's therapy already that exists for that So technology in a way, when we're attached to this, it's distracting us from potentially diving deeper into our dreams. And human connection. And human connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying like, I think the biggest thing, I I like the way how you clarified that. I'm not saying that this is the the, just the worst thing ever Mm because it's also the best thing. It's also the best. (laughs) Depends on how you use it and what your viewpoint is. I'm just saying like, also have a system that allows you to focus on you. I think there's a lot of information out there and I think books are an amazing tool for us to use that we don't use enough of. Um, And that's, you know, that's why I wrote this book, man. Listen, there are a lot of people out there who are suffering, who don't have any type of framework and and they don't necessarily know how to follow their dreams. But for those creatives, those entrepreneurs, you know, that's why I came up with the six steps to living your dreams. Like, how do you get more clear? How do you have more commitment? Like, how do you connect more with people to to really help facilitate that how do you become more competent how do you condition yourself mentally physically spiritually emotionally and then how do you get the cash flow to help you Mm. live these dreams right and that was all surveyed because i asked people like what was the number one thing that's holding you back from living your dreams Mm -hmm. and out of three thousand people these are the six commonalities that i got and which that gave me the the framework to help really put this dream together because i said i know i'm not the only one that's struggling with this What are other people struggling to as well? So that's how I came up with the book. I love how you broke down each of those sections because those are actual real things that we deal with on a daily basis, not just for our dreams, but every single one of our goals. Like those help with every single goal that we have, our our career especially, because we sometimes shift. Sometimes we don't have the same dream that we had when we were little. Uh, When I was little, I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to really train, um, uh, whales at sea world um really? but that was like when i was little <laughs> i don't know why i was like five years old talking about i was gonna like be the person that jumps off of shamu's nose but um, but you're a child <laughs> our dreams change over time yeah. yep the more that we're exposed to things the more that we grow but what how, how do you decide on the dream because i think that's where some people are stuck. they're like well i'm really good at this and i'm really good at this i like that you mentioned calling how yeah. do you know when something is your calling because I don't think that we think about our calling enough. Yeah, I think those are two separate questions. Um, the first one, like, how do you decide on your dream? 
I really think those passions do ignite that, mm -hmm. right? It's really about testing the waters, just seeing like what you're passionate about, what you're passionate about. And sometimes that leads to the place of the dream. Sometimes the dream and the passion, they intersect, right? They're, they're, they're kind of intertwined, so to speak. So I think you have to continue to harp onto your passions because I have a lot of people that come to me and say, listen, I don't necessarily know what my dreams is. I just know I have all this passion inside mm -hmm. of me and I want to do this and I want to do that. And then it's really about taking a step back and having more of an aerial view to say, what are the things that, I've always been connected to, mm. you know, is there something that I've always been connected to that I've always yearned to do? Or have you tried it? Have you put yourself in that position? Because right. a lot of times we don't even put ourselves in that position. We just think that's what we want to do. And then yeah. we actually try to do it. And it's just like, nah, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's not what it is. So I think you have to continually stay on the passion path. Um, and hopefully that will get you to the place of your dream for me and some other people they've known it for a long time. Like, yeah, you know, you wanted to do Shamu, <laughs> but at, you know, but at a train well, should I say, but at what point did that shift? Right. And I yeah. think if, if you even look back and just knowing like your journey and like and seeing you on radio and those type of things, it's interesting to see the foundation that was being laid now and you stayed in that. And I think that was the that ignited all of the stuff inside of you to yeah. get you to that place, right? So it was just, you just staying consistent in the thing that you were loving and enjoying doing. And that was something that you were very passionate about. But I think this is more of what your calling is, right? So yeah. now to answer the second question about calling, I think we all know for those that feel like we have some sort of calling, if we're gonna talk about calling, you gotta talk about some sort of spiritual anchor. Yep, let's and, go there. And, and I, have a, I have that spiritual anchor deeply rooted in the Christianity, although I'm more spiritual now, more so than anything. Mm -hmm. And it was me literally just going to God saying, listen, I'm tired of all the stuff that I've been trying to do. I've been trying to do it my way. What do you want me to do? I'm releasing it all. I mm. give it all to you. Take anybody away, take everything away. And I surrender it all to you because I am just trying to find that thing that I know you have, you, you have this burning desire inside yeah. me. I just, I just don't know how to get there. And then that's when the doors just started opening up, man. So, you know, I think for those that are looking for their calling, so to speak, it's already there. It's about you having some sort of sacrifice to really get clarity on what that calling is, though. I think what we forget sometimes is that you you released, right? You gave it all up to God and you were like, use me. How you use me, I shall follow. I, I, I had the same moment. I've been on my knees a few times, giving, throwing my hands in the air, like, please, Jesus, help me. Um, because there's been times too, where before I had my business, before I had the podcast, before I was on radio, like there's, there's a lot of free work that I did. There was a lot of, um, speaking engagements that I spoke at where I wasn't getting paid. There was a, there's a lot of freaking podcasts. I've been like, there was a lot of things that I was doing, um, that people didn't necessarily see, or they may not know all of your speaking engagement, BJ, all the behind the work scenes that you're doing. And we think, that if we don't start to see the signs that we're supposed to be in this, or we don't get um, the money or the instant gratification that we feel we're so deserving of, that it's not for us, that we should tap out. What do you say to that when we're not necessarily giving everything we're giving out? We're not, we're not getting it in return. It's not being reciprocated. We're not being um, appreciated for all of our hard work. I think at the end of the day, for me, this is the thing that's worked the most for me is I stopped thinking about myself so much, mm. right? Because that became self-sabotaging. Right. So I started thinking about how do I, who am I doing this for? And what am I doing this for? Yeah. What's my why? So my why is honestly to serve God. And through that, I'm able to help serve and help other people. So when I took the earnest off me and said, yeah. man, I'm doing this for a bigger picture. I'm doing it for other people. That's when everything changed. The money came, everything else changed because it wasn't just about that. Cause yeah, I did a thousand speaking engagements, a thousand podcasts <laughs> for Like, I'm like, yo, 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 you know what? Yo, yeah, help your boy out, like something. <laughs> Lord, come on. And, then, and it just started changing when I stopped thinking about me and like, yo, who are you really serving? And what's your true why behind this? Everything changed, man. I think that one of the things that you're, one of the things that you're speaking though is that you are walking in your purpose, right? Yeah. Um, I work with people who are walking in their purpose and want to meet their purpose mate Two purposeful people coming together to create their empire to work in their purpose and serve the universe together yeah 
but sometimes one, you don't know, you question yourself, am I really in my purpose? Am I not? But then other times too, you get a partner maybe who may not have found their purpose yet, or you're into someone who doesn't have, who's maybe not as big of a dreamer. They're not as ambitious. What do you say to those couples who maybe really care for each other, but they're not equally yoked when it comes to living their dreams out loud? Yeah, I'm not the, um, I'm not the best here to answer that because that has actually been a constant uh, struggle of mine. I'll be completely transparent. That's something that uh, I'm a work in progress and I understand like even just through my therapist and maybe something that you and I need to have a conversation about because mm-hmm. there have been times that I have not dated somebody because I felt that we were unequally yoked mm-hmm. and um, there were just certain basic things that I was just not going to stand for, like mm. i.e. working out, i.e. investing into yourself, mm-hmm. right, to just become the better version of you. And and for me to communicate that to you and you're like, I'm not going to do that when it's like, well, we're just not going to work. And that's not a knock yeah. on you. You know what I mean? And there's some things that you may not like. You may not like the fact that I'm bald. I understand <laughs> it. I get it. You know what I mean? But it's really about having that communication up front most people are so afraid to communicate yeah and i think you have to communicate up front and ask the tough questions and really find out is that person really ready to put in this work if you don't because i don't want to force something on somebody if Mm -hmm. it's just not natural i don't want to force that on you but are you open to it or can we have this conversation that you be open to that so that's kind of like my perspective of how i feel about it I'm a work in progress. And <laughs> I don't have, I'm not the best because that has been a challenge of mine too as well. Okay. Cause so I'll speak to it then. Um, what you're speaking to and what it sounds like you are dealing with in your dating situations is you have these set of core values. Um, you're the, the compass that guides you. Right. And you have also these deal breakers. You are dating people maybe who don't have the same core values or at least respect your core values. And it's making you hard to respect theirs in return because they don't respect yours. And you want your partner to, because it naturally happens, mirror your behavior. You're growing, you want your partner to grow. You're evolving, you want your partner to evolve. What happens though when you have someone who isn't willing and wanting for the same growth or what your definition of growth is, because maybe you guys have two different definitions, it does make you lose that, what were we talking about earlier? Arousal. It makes you lose that attraction to them when you guys are not on the same page. And no matter how funny they are, no matter how great of chemistry you guys have, what you're speaking to is a lack of compatibility. So you can have chemistry, but what it sounds like is that the compatibility isn't there when they don't value the same things that you do that you really think are important to be a good person, to right. uh, live your dreams out loud. If they're not in the same belief system as living the dreams out loud, or even in you know what your book, those um, what you have it broken down by those steps. Yep. If they don't believe in your steps, that means they don't believe in your purpose. And if they don't believe in your purpose and it doesn't serve them, they are going to have a hard time serving you. Which and is a- sometimes we just don't, we can't respect someone who doesn't respect us which is a part of the dating slash exploratory phase. Like this is where you really get in and date and ask these questions. And if it's not aligned, then don't waste each other's time. You know what I mean? Like don't don't push it just because there's a physical thing. Like, nah, like if it's not aligned, you know, like don't do it, period, point blank. It's hard for couples though, when you guys have two different dreams. So you have a dream, they have a dream and your dreams aren't in alignment, but you really love this person. You really care about them, or you maybe even do believe in their dream, but your guys' dreams aren't aligned. Um, yeah. You're going, you want to go left. They want to go right. Since this is not your strong suit. I don't know if you've, if you've had someone who maybe wasn't a dreamer the way that you are, or maybe didn't believe in manifesting their dreams. Yeah. What you need to start thinking about is, Can I still live this dream and will it be just as happy and flourish just as well if my partner is not in support? Usually the answer will be no. So then you have to make a choice of, is it worth it to me? Do do you recommend, and I'm asking you, if you adjust your dream or your expectation from your partner or you let them go? Yeah, I'm going to say let go. (laughs) 
I'm going to say let go just in terms just of like, cut. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't think you should adjust your dream for anybody, right? If you adjust your dream, you should be adjusting it for yourself because you need to make that adjustment and go in a different direction with the dream. But in terms of having that best friend, that partner, like even if, yeah, I don't even want to go there. But for me, for example, I have been very adamant when I meet women who want this and they want that. I wasn't ready for kids. I'm still like on the fence about that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I want to get married. I want to have kids. I just don't know if it's right now. I'm mm -hmm. really just coming out of that space. But for the women that I knew that wanted kids yeah. and they want to get married, like, yo, we, we uh uh. Because that now you're asking me to really sacrifice some element of my dream. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that right now. You're a great person, so I need to let you go, mm -hmm. right? We, we can't even go this path. We can't even really continue to date because you're just going to resent me because I'm focused on my dreams and I'm going to resent you because you're wanting to move forward, get married, get kids, date in that way. And that's not what I want to do. Mm. So you had to release and you had to be realistic with yourself. And that's it. That's that. That's a that's a, that's a big man to be able to say, I'm not going to waste your time. I need to live my dream out loud. <laughs> but, it, but it took me. I mean, honestly, it was a lot of fuck boy ways, too. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 it took all of the bullshit, all the stuff that I was the real true fuck boy. If you look at him, this is me. That's OK, who I was. that's who I, I, was. I was at one point in time, one, once upon a time. So when you open up asking the question about not loving yourself. Yep. And I told you that I was hurting other people like, yeah, that was me being that person. So it was therapy that helped with that. Can we speak a little bit about this fuckery? Yeah. Because I don't think that us as women hear enough men admit to that. And us as women, I feel like we're number one dreamers. Like when it comes to love and relationships, when it comes to everything we want in this world, man, we dream the fuck off. We are, we stay in a dream. Yes. And even when it comes to where you guys are realistically at when in the relationship, I'm sure you had a lot of women who, like you said, you know, had these expectations or these desires that you were not ready to fulfill. Yeah. Oftentimes as women, because we're dreamers, we think that we're still going to get the white picket fence or the Romeo who's going to come, you know, um, save the day. Like we think that someone's going to swoop us off of our feet or that you're going to see how amazing we are and you're going to level up for us once you see how amazing we are. Talk to me about if that is a realistic dream or not. I do think so. Uh, here's the thing. The flaw in me before in the past versus now is thinking that I had to do everything on my own or get to a place specifically financially before I could get into a relationship. And what I learned is that when I was on my fuckery, if I would have just allowed the woman and, and not be in the fuckery and given my energy elsewhere, the dream could have been escalated. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I was so disconnected over here serving this energy and not giving this energy enough and it was the ones always trying to support this dream. And I just wasn't even really in full alignment, right? It was just so much. And I believe the dream was put on the back burner because of that, you know what I mean? Mm. Because of my fuckery. So there, I've always encountered myself with amazing women, mm. but I wasn't in a line. I was on the fuck boy stuff. Mm. And when I completely pulled back away from that and said, I'm not going to date anybody. I'm not going to go down this path because guess what? I am flawed. I need to heal. Mm. I need therapy. I got to invest into myself. I got to do the work because I really do want to give this queen the best version of me. And I realized that it's going to end in destruction. Mm. I got to the point where I was so afraid of like God taking me out because of the way that I was living. Like, I'm going to take this dream away from you. You're not going to get this. You're not going to get that because of the way that I was living. And it just yeah. wasn't truthful. And it wasn't in alignment to what I wanted him to do for me. So that surrender, God, listen, I want the calling. I'm ready to answer it strip this away, strip this away. It was a lot, but it was me understanding that I'm not feeling fulfilled. Like mm. I would have sex and be like, when I got finished, I'm like, what, what, why did I do that? <laughs> why, why, why did I do that? Just feeling like, nasty. I, I just wasted, I wasted creation. Like, nah, nah, why, 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 why am I doing that? No, I can't do that. So I had to make some real serious changes and it was tough. You know, it's been, it's, been, it's been an interesting journey, but it was tough.
I'm gonna steal it. I was just wasted creation. <laughs> man, that's life. That's life. So you don't really understand, like you, like man, you already know this more than anybody. But I mean, just the energy exchange with somebody, like, and it's not even in alignment, and you just out here just giving life away. Oh my god! You, you start to feel lifeless. Yeah. Right. Like, the energy nah. exchange is real, um, yeah. and you were giving your energy away, but also take pouring from a cup that was not full but empty. And so women, unfortunately, oftentimes, you know, we bear the grunt end of that, the pain of that, of loving someone who hasn't yet fallen in love with themselves fully. And we suffer in the midst of that. And then what does it wind up doing? We start mirroring you. We fall out of love with ourselves because we're dating someone who's not in love with themselves. And we start behaving in a way that doesn't serve our needs, serve our purpose. And now we become unpurposeful. Is unpurposeful word unpurposeful i don't know but <laughs> i don't know i threw the un in there okay <laughs> but like in that with with that though it it, create, it creates a chain effect so Absolutely. the damage that you created or the people that you hurt with you not being madly in love with yourself and walking in your purpose and fulfilling it then we're hurt now we go out and we date someone else and that becomes something where we're bringing our baggage someone else now is responsible for what you had done to us we hurt them and then they go out and they hurt someone else we live and it's an energetic it's a transference of energy we literally transfer it from one person to the next if we don't take a beat pause the way that you did and give it up to god we don't stop and say you know what (laughs) i'm out of control right now sometimes we don't know that we're out of control Right. And I do think that when we are in relationship or we're in a relationship that maybe they are a great person, but we're not at where we need to be. Mm. It does stunt our growth and us walking in our purpose when we're not mentally prepared or equipped to take on the blessing that's in front of us. Absolutely. I also think when you talk about the chain effect and like, why am I tripping from a personal standpoint, that comes back to the trauma that is in our genes yeah. that we haven't dealt oh with my God, as yes. well, right? So that that does carry over into a lot of different aspects. Like sometimes you could just be tripping and you not realize, but that's because your ancestor Ooh. didn't deal with that trauma. Oh my God. Right? So, so true. And it becomes a chain effect. It becomes a chain effect. So mm-hmm. we have to deal with that in addition to you know, before we can even show up and meet that person, like yeah. we got to deal with ourselves because there's some shit here that we don't even know that exists. But because oh, somebody DJ. didn't deal with it, it's a chain effect. Yeah. You guys, DJ, you guys, BJ is preaching right now. What he is, what BJ is saying is so very true. When he's talking about um, your genetics or your DNA, the trauma that he's speaking to is genetically imprinted in you from your ancestors. This is scientifically proven. This is not just spiritual based, right? We could, some of us call it um, generational curses, which speaks of it in the Bible, but genetically studies have been shown <laughs> that we carry yeah. on the trauma of our ancestors, whether they've been heartbroken, whether they've had addictions that lies in our genetic cells. Right. Then we grow up in an environment, that's the second element, our DNA, then we grow up in an environment that maybe didn't show us the best example of love, of relationship, of how to live your dreams. Maybe you didn't have parents that supported you or showed you what it's like to believe in themselves and then execute. Then there's the third thing of how we choose our partnerships. Then we start dating in relation to the environment that we grew up in, already dealing with our DNA. So there's three elements that could potentially take us out. <laughs> three Before elements. Because <laughs> then we have that relationship trauma where it's like everybody I get with is, you know, a fuck boy or every chick that I get with, she never appreciates me. Like there's, we start creating these patterns over and over and over yep. versus us taking a beat like BJ said and actually saying, he, BJ essentially did what I tell all of you guys to do, a SWOT analysis on himself. He said, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Lord, what are my opportunities to grow right now? And what are the threats if I don't? Because if I don't solve this for myself, I'm going to affect my offspring, my partner, and eventually f- mess up my purpose in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Drop the mic. You're done. You need to see <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. Yes. Yeah. BJ, yeah. where are you now? Talk to me about you, you, you 
you, cause I know I've hit you up before, like BJ, I got a great girl for you. I think you're, cause you are an amazing man. Like, I'm not going to lie. You are intelligent, higher level of consciousness, extremely successful, handsome. Like you have all the elements that every woman would want. Yeah. But then I hit you and you're like, yeah, no, I'm not dating right now. Sorry. I, I can't do it. I can't. I was like, what? I'm throwing yeah. some chicks that I'm throwing <laughs> clients at you. And you're like, no, I'm good. I'm working on myself. I was like, okay. I, look, let me take a seat. I respect that. Yeah. Like I can respect that. That's tough, man. It's tough. The discipline, the flesh is real. All that stuff is tough. It's a challenge. Um, you know, just that process. Number one, I just want to say thank you for those words. That means a lot to me. I'm always thankful that you think that way of me. And like, <laughs> you've been like, yo, I got somebody I want to hook you up with. I'm just like, I'm like, yo, I'm not right. Like, and I know I'm not right. So I'm not going to disrespect and put myself in a situation and disrespect you mm. and that, that other beautiful human being like, uh-uh, when I'm still trying to do that. I'm in the best place that I've ever been, honestly, right now. I'm in a very beautiful place. Yes. My spirit is great. I feel like I'm, you know, we're always going to be a work in progress, but I feel like I'm more open now. And I'm starting to welcome the opportunity to possibly, you know, start dating and getting back into that phase. But it's been a work. I mean, I mean mm. it's been a it's been a process. It's been a lot, you know. Um, I'm about to be 38 in a few weeks. Ooh. And um, you know, yeah, I want to kind of look towards, you know, some 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 kiddos. You and, know I'm here and, for you when you, you ready know? for it. <laughs> <laughs> BJ, really quick, I gotta ask you, have you read The Way of the Superior Man? Absolutely. Okay. It's right there. That, uh, one of my favorites um uh i want to write the female version of that okay but david detta speaks to um how a man cannot be in relationship or give his all to a woman unless he is walking in his purpose and on his path unless right. he you know knows who he is and he strives for that are you a firm believer in that us as women cannot be in a relationship with a man who doesn't know his purpose or doesn't know where he's going you can be i just don't advise you to Right? <laughs> that's a great answer <laughs> you know i just wouldn't advise you i feel as if like when it comes to man and woman connection there's something so beautiful and special when a man knows who he is and a woman knows who she is and from a i don't like the whole term of a get a woman that can stand behind you no we we beside each other we ride yeah. this thing out together but it's something beautiful for me coming into this place and space knowing that i've done the work and now i can really give to the situation mm. versus just I wasn't right before right so I think to answer your question for me personally it's tough to be in a relationship when a person hasn't identified what that thing is mm -hmm. and they're just completely out of balance with who they are as a human being it's tough to succeed because I mean listen there have been some times where I've resented even talking to somebody just because I'm like yo I'm not right why am I doing this like, yeah yo, I'm, I'm, I'm just not right like I can't really give you me because I'm just not there yet so that's and, just my perspective and it's harder to when a man doesn't know like where he is or where he should be in that moment when he's still finding himself because in the gender role but also the energy role you're in your masculine for us to sit in our feminine and allow you to lead means you have to know where you're going and where you're taking us. Absolutely. So it's very hard to be in relationship with man who doesn't know yet. And it, it, it makes us incapable of following because then you make us start questioning ourselves and your leadership. So, you know, I am, I am with you. I strongly advise women who, if you are dating someone who is still finding himself as powerful as you ladies are, and even men, if you're dating a woman who's still finding herself, you know, take a beat and really ask yourself, are you really capable of helping this person? Because I do think your partner can strengthen you and iron sharpens iron. I do think that you can help someone find themselves. However, not all of us are equally yoked and equipped to do that based on the level of where that person is at. If they're like right there at that edge and they're about to blow, okay, let's go. But if they're so far behind that they're, they have nothing to give you, you need to listen to them and listen to what they have to say and take it as the truth that they are not ready for a relationship mm. instead of us trying to convince them to get ready. You know, it sounds like you, you've said this a time or two before. <laughs> <laughs> I preach this, okay, I preach this. <laughs> But you're just hitting on so many because you are you are a legit dreamer like you are a successful man and we all want a successful man so some of us like need to hear this from someone who is like saying when we're not ready we're not ready like we're gambling essentially by dating someone who's not ready and who's on his fuckery absolutely i mean listen man 
at the end of the day, when it comes to this process of living your dreams, that's where we started at. That's where we can, you know, take it back to the foundation. It's very tough and difficult for me to really even live my dreams out loud and honor that phrase when I'm not whole. I'm not whole because I'm mm. doing the people a disservice, right? So there's a responsibility that I have to humanity to ensure that I am really truly living what that is because people are investing in me they're paying their money yeah. to want me to speak to write books to coach them all of these things i have a responsibility and so i understood that when i first started this and i knew that i needed to go inward mm. and really do the work so that i could show up and serve at the highest level and that's just really truly what it is and you're doing it you're doing it love is next the love is next love is the next <laughs> dream we're going to put on your dream list okay <laughs> I support that. I support that. Because we're just, we're only going to quantum leap your dreams by getting with your purpose, mate. Man, listen, all of my homeboys who are married, every single one of them, their life is just gone. Yep. Ever since they got married, like personally and professionally, just. Dude, there's data to show that when a man is with a woman, you guys make twice as much. You guys get promoted more. You guys are smiling more. You guys are happier more, able to communicate better. Like we really do elevate. And you, and the same for us. Us as women are more successful as well when we have partnership. You because guys help God, us. God is a woman. I'm going to believe that. God yeah, is I love a you. woman. Yes. Man, y'all are some of the baddest. Like, listen, man. Like, I just, I still to this day, I look at women sometimes alone. I'm just like, how? Like, incredible. This is so beautiful. <laughs> this is so beautiful, man. God yeah. is a woman. <laughs> I, 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 yes. Uh, we're going to bet. And see, that's a mic drop right there, right? <laughs> okay. You are going, we're wrapping up the show. You are going to give us the naked truth. All right. I want to know if you could body swap for the day with anyone. Who would you body swap with? Who would you trade places with just for today, just to live their dream out loud? Oh, ooh, that's a great question. I've never been asked that. Who you swapping dreams with? Who you living? Ooh. Mm. I'm going to say LeBron James. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say LeBron James. I think what LeBron has done as a man, as a father, despite his circumstances coming mm -hmm. up in a single parent household, which I solely relate to that, um, father not being there, defied the odds, never gotten in any trouble, um, you know, really stepped into this, was given $90 million at the age of 17, 18 yeah. years old, has really like showed up and been like one of the best athletes to ever play the game, invest so much into his body, his, his mental health, like he's invested into calm, to see what he's done. And we're mm -hmm. so we're always trying to compare him to Jordan and Kobe and things mm. like that. And we're all, we are literally witnessing history and what this man is doing it mm. at the highest level yeah. of humanity. He's so, and I've had a chance to work with him once, but he's so like meticulous and articulate mm. about every single thing. Like he really does exude greatness. Yeah. He just, just doesn't use that strive for greatness for a reason. <laughs> is really striving for greatness and that's how his life is if i could body swap with anybody it would be lebron james because i'm proud to see him as a father as a husband mentor to many friend cousin uncle all of that stuff like i just i admire him as a human being for sure Ooh, look if lebron hears this he's gonna be flattered i'm like j-lo's my person but you have me over here thinking that i should convert to lebron i'm like maybe it's not j-lo maybe it's lebron you saw me that was beautiful thank you bj for sharing with us on how to live our dreams out loud what it looked like for you how do we go through this process i would love for people to be able to reach out to you if they're struggling with their dream please let us know where we can find you give us all your social where people can reach out to you sign up for your services how can they get in touch with you all social media is at bj the dreamer that's facebook instagram you normally can find me more on instagram and facebook uh this book i want to make sure i give a few copies out please. to anybody that's listening or watching this so let's make sure we organize that but listen i just want to say this to anybody that's got a dream at the end of the day there are going to be people who are going to tell you that that's not possible spicy mm -hmm. is a prime example of 
when she first started this. My family members and friends told me that I was crazy because I was broke. But at, this end, at the end of the day, they couldn't see the vision. They didn't know what intuitively I felt. And sometimes you can't explain it. And I want to tell you all that that's perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. Just trust what you feel. Like if you feel like it's just something that's calling you mm -hmm. and you got to answer that call, like it's something in your spirit that's calling you towards that dream, answer it. You may not have all the answers uh, in terms of like figuring it out, but stay diligent in that quest and mm -hmm. find somebody that's already done it and that's already been successful so that you can really cut down on a lot of the headaches and the pains and things of that nature. And really, you know, when it comes to the book, it's not about me just pushing this book, but it's really about me creating some sort of framework. And the, the great thing about this book, book that when I made it is that the book is interactive. So by the time that you're done reading this book, you have a plan together mm. as it relates to your dream. So I'll leave you with that. And, and again, I just want to say thank you so much for this platform and what you've created and the work that you're doing. And I know where you're going. I, I already see it. I feel it. <laughs> I can, I can give, that's a whole nother conversation. But I just want to say thank, <laughs> thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, it means a lot to me. I'm always a, a fan of yours and a supporter of yours. I uh, love you. I love your husband, man. I just love what you, you all stand for. And I love uh, everything about you all. So thank you for having me here. Oh, thank you, BJ. Okay, you guys now, he's making me blush. <laughs> you guys know you can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mati. Go to thespicylife.com. Make sure that you click and subscribe to the Spicy Life podcast. Share this episode with a friend who definitely needs to hear it, okay? They can learn a lot from it and make sure that you guys follow us. Love you. There you guys have it. You have just been spiced. Love it. Thank you. The Spicy Life.